Hello, and welcome to this Zoom training. Um, this training is for anyone who hasn't yet um, set up a Zoom account, or let's say you have set up a Zoom account and you'd like to get more involved in our cancer support community virtual programs, um, but you're not quite certain about Zoom or how it works and it seems very foreign, um, or maybe, you know, not quite sure how to use it on a smartphone or on an iPad. Um, I will go over all of those things today and hopefully um, by the end of this training video you'll be a bit more comfortable with Zoom and um, be able to get online and start with some of our programs. Um, for those of you or anyone that um, doesn't know me, my name is Jen Van Landingham. I am the Cincinnati Program Manager um, for Cancer Support Community. And um, I'm gonna take you step-by-step step, uh, through uh, this training. And we will start with how to actually set up a Zoom account. So I'm going to share my screen and we will get started. So I am on my laptop. Um, so this is the process that we will start out with is if you are on a laptop or on a desktop computer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go uh, and I'm gonna search and bring up Zoom. We've got it right here. And then what I wanna do is sign up for an account. And of course, what's great about Zoom is you can create a free account. And a free account is the only account that you will need to participate in our programs. So no need to spend any money on a Zoom account. So for starters, when I hit the sign up, it's free button. It's gonna ask me for my date of birth. Um, and I'm gonna just put in something here. And then it's going to ask for an email address. Now it says a work email address doesn't have to be your work email address, of course. Just put in whatever email address that you uh, are most familiar with or that you would like to use to sign up for Zoom. So for example, I'm just going to put in my personal email address, this one. And when I hit the sign up button, what it's going to do um, it's going to tell me I already, we've sent you this um, confirmation um, to my email address. So I've already got my email open. So if I go to my inbox, it says, welcome to Zoom. Um, but what you're going to receive is an email that says, please activate your Zoom account. I'm going to click on that email, and you're going to click activate account. And then what it's going to do, once you click Activate Account, um, now my account has already been activated. So what you are going to see on your screen is, it's going to basically simply ask you for just a few things. Um, it's going to ask you for just your first name, your last name, and it's going to ask you to provide a password. Um, and then after you set all of that up, um, there's going to be a few additional screens, um, which are totally optional. One of them um, is a screen just asking you if you would like to add email addresses for your coworkers. And it'll have an option just to skip that step. And you can skip that. And then the next screen that it brings you to is a screen that's going to ask you if you would like to do um, a sample video, um, like hosting a sample video. And that's optional. You could do that if you would like. Otherwise, what it's going to do is it's going to bring you to your account, um, and I can show you what to expect from that account. So here's Zoom. Let's say I've already got we've already got the account set up. I'm going to sign in. It's my same email address, and my password. See if I can remember what password I gave myself. I'm going to unclick this stay signed in button. Um, 
you'll you'll want to pay attention to seeing if you can remember to unclick this right here. That also helps with security, is making sure that it signs you out every time. Um, so here's what it's going to look like um, in your profile. Now, the re these three um, green sections here, these are just Zoom updates. So basically, all this is is Zoom telling you about new features that they've created in the website, if you'd like to know about them. Um, some of them are security updates. Um, so that's just extra information, but this is basically what you can expect from a profile page. If you go over here to meetings, this is the main one that you'll want to know about, and really the only one you'll need. Um, and if I had any meetings, let's say, that I registered for, um, or that I scheduled myself, uh, they would be here and this is where they would be listed. So what I can do from this viewpoint is I can hit join a meeting and let's say I received in the mail this lovely week at a glance I like to call it from cancer support community I'm gonna change out my glasses here these are my um, blue screen glasses so I'm gonna switch over to these so that it's more gentle on my eyes to look at the laptop screen so Today's Thursday, let's say for example, let's say it's Thursday at 1 p.m. and I would like to join the coffee chat. Over here, it will say a list of meeting IDs. So when I go in here to the website and I have the join a meeting, it says to enter the meeting ID or a personal link name. What you wanna do is just enter the meeting ID. Simple as that which you can find right here. So for coffee chat, 957-969-380. So I'll just enter that right here and I'll hit the join button and then it will bring me up to this main screen. So as if I were in the coffee chat and I was on a laptop or a desktop computer, this is basically what I would be seeing just for myself. Obviously at the moment, there are no additional participants on here. We will be joining um, Sarah Thompson uh, here shortly. And Sarah will be helping us with some additional ins and outs um, as if you were actually in a class, um, just to get you more familiar with Zoom. Uh, some things though to show you uh, for starters is down here is the mute button. that mutes myself and if I need to mute and I need to walk away for a minute uh, or let's say it's a yoga class or it's meditation and I don't want to be disruptive uh, or my environment around me is a bit loud I'll just hit the mute button and then there's a stop video option and then in that case all you will see is my name on the screen and if, if I click on that again it's in the lower left corner that you'll see here and there I am. Now, some additional options. Let's say in the lower left corner, your full name comes up. And for anonymity, confidentiality, you do not want your full name to be shown when you go into a cancer support community. So uh, let's say it's a support group or a yoga class or an education program, whatever it is on Zoom. You don't want anything on there but your first name this is what you can do. So you go down here and you'll see this lovely little spot right here that says participants. You can click on that and you can scroll over your name and it says more and you can click on more and then you give yourself the option to rename yourself. Oops, not Jen. Um, I'm not gonna ask, my, ask it to remember me. And then I just hit the okay button and I can X out of here and there we go. Now my name in the lower left corner has been changed to Jen. And um, a few other things to note, this is a chat box. If you click on this, you'll see here where it says it's to everyone. You can click on this button and you can choose, it'll give you a list down, of names of all the participants and you can click on one participant if you want to send them a private message 
but typically uh, we use this just for everyone in the meeting uh, and it works like any kind of chat box. Hi everyone. And there it is. And what that will do is it'll pop up on other people's screens right in this area and then they can see um, that you've said hello. Or let's say you want to send a question to the presenter. Um, the chat box is a great, a great way to do that um, if you don't want to interrupt the class or you want to keep yourself on mute. So that's some main things um, to note um, about Zoom. These reactions are totally optional over here. Um, you can do a thumbs up and participants will see your thumbs up um, and that'll go away temporarily in a moment. You can do a clap if you'd like. Um, these buttons uh, you don't have to worry about. And um, once we get on to a call with Sarah, we'll show you a few more ins and outs and um, some other things to talk about before we do that is, for example, let's say one of your concerns with Zoom is security. Well, um, Zoom has definitely done quite a lot uh, in the past weeks and months um, to increase their security on their end, which is great. So they've put a lot of measures in place that can help us to ensure that all of our members, all of your accounts are secure, that our accounts are secure, that nobody is getting into our classes or our support groups that isn't supposed to be there. It's not 100% foolproof and obviously we can't guarantee that, um, but just to give you some perspective, since we've started doing Zoom, so it's been two months, um, in the two months of classes that we have put on and support groups, um, we've only had two confirmed cases of individuals who have tried to log on to one of our classes um, that we had to remove. So, you know, considering in the past two months, um, what is that, 10 weeks? with that many classes and we've only had two instances that we've really had to be concerned about, I'd say that's pretty good. So hopefully that gives you some peace of mind and some perspective that it's very rare um, that anybody tries to hack any of our, of our programs. And there's a reason for that. Um, the first thing that you'll find is that we create what's called a waiting room for all of our classes. It's an education program or if it's, um, a networking group, um, any of the healthy lifestyle programs, so yoga, meditation, um, there's a waiting room set up. And so what happens is, let's say for example, I'm the host and I come into the meeting to start the class. What happens is if you are the participant, when you log in to and you add in the meeting ID and you come on to the class, it puts you into a waiting room, um, a virtual waiting room. What Essentially what that means is that you're, you're just waiting um, and it puts up a little bit of a box um, online on your internet um, that just says that you're waiting for the host. And so what you can do then is just sit and wait for the host to arrive and then slowly but surely, uh, as long as the host recognizes your name, um, which 99% of the time we, we recognize everybody's names um, and recognize your name as a real person and not, not someone that's trying to, to hack our programs. Um, then we let you into the waiting room. And so that's one measure that we have in place. Um, another registration um, measure um, is for pretty much all of our programs except for our support groups. The support groups obviously are extremely confidential as well. And what we do with the support group is that if you're interested in one of our weekly support groups, um, we will have a separate Zoom set up for that for you. And that helps with security as well. So that is a little bit different. Um, however, with our exercise programs, education programs, our social events, uh, our networking groups, anything else different, 
we add a registration requirement. So what that means is that it just simply asks you to register for uh, the meeting or the program if you're interested in attending. So let me give you an example of that. We'll share the screen. And what I'll do, first of all, is to log out of my email. Always recommend logging out of your email all the time. If you're not using it, any program, Facebook, um, email, Zoom, whatever program, if you're not using it, log out. That will also help reduce any, any potential for, for hacking. So let's say I am in Facebook. Actually, for those who may not use Facebook, let's say we're in our email. Um, we're gonna do a little pretend here. And what we're gonna do is find one of our email virtual programs. See if I can find one very quickly. Hmm. It's hard to find one, isn't it? There we go. Now, this is my um, email that I get from Cancer Support Community every week telling me what's new and what kind of programs we've got going on. Um, now, look, we've got a cancer and spirituality reflecting the positive and deflecting the negative, and we got a registration here. That was on May 18th, but coming up, we have a family dance party. And let's say I'm interested in going to the family dance party. So, the extra security measure that we have put into place at Cancer Support Community is asking people to register in advance. Um, so all you have to do is click that registration button and it should bring you to a screen that looks just like this, meeting registration. It's got the topic, family dance party, the time so that you know that it's the right program. Um, you can put in your name, your information, your email address, you confirm your email. And it is going to ask you, excuse me, to ensure that you're not a robot, which is another security measure that uh, Zoom has put into place. And once you go through these CAPTCHAs, it might do some additional um, security measures, such as um, putting up pictures of crosswalks or traffic lights and asking you to pick which pictures have crosswalks or traffic lights in them in order to proceed. And the reason that Zoom does that is for extra security. So um, this is basically all you need to do to register yourself for a program. And so that's a good one to know as well. Other than that, as far as additional security measures, the other thing that um, hosts also um, are sure to do, especially with the support groups and the networking groups, um, is after about 15 minutes of the meeting, uh, we do um, lock the meeting. That means nobody else is able to get in. That's another security measure that we can take if we need to, um, along with the registration, um, <clears throat> and as well as adding the waiting room. So those are three measures that we put into place um, as well as um, all of our instructors and our facilitators for our groups have been very well trained on Zoom and to ensure that if someone does jump onto the meeting who's not familiar or maybe not supposed to be there, um, are trained on how to remove that person from the meeting. So we are able to do that as well. So I do hope that that answers any um, questions or concerns that you have about security. Uh, with regard to Zoom and some of the measures that we have put into place at Cancer Support Community, as well as any measures that Zoom puts into place, which they do quite frequently. Um, they are constantly updating their website um, and all of their apps 
on um, smartphones and on iPads to ensure um, that you know safety is number one. Um, so with that, what we're going to do next is we're going to work uh, with Sarah on learning some additional things uh, on how to utilize Zoom once you are in a class and some small ins and outs to make your Zoom experience um, a little bit better in addition to how to use Zoom for an iPhone um, and how to use Zoom for an iPad. Now, what I can do is I can share with you um, how to use it on an iPhone and an iPad um, by sharing my screen. And then what we've got, I can delete out of that. And this is a Zoom training that we put together with directions for smartphones and tablets, otherwise known as an iPad, iPad, tablet, smartphone. So basically what you're gonna do um, is for starters uh, with your tablet or your, let's say you have an iPad or a smartphone is that you want to download the Zoom app to your phone or to your iPad. Um, that's the first step. And once you do that, Let's say you already have gotten online and you've created an account. All you will need to do then is to log in and sign in to Zoom. However, if you need to create an account, it is also the same process on a tablet, an iPad, or a smartphone as what I just showed you by um, putting in your email address. You still would want to go to your email and make sure you retrieve and activate that account. Um, so it's still going to ask you to do those things. Um, again, the app is free of charge. Um, you usually, um, when you click the link to the email um, to verify, it should prompt you to open the app uh, automatically on your device. And then what you do is you just enter your first and last name. Um, it'll ask you, of course, to put in a password if you haven't created an account yet. Once you've done all of those things, um, what it will ask you to do, what it will do on the screen is it will show you the option to join a meeting. So again, let's say you have an upcoming class that you want to attend. Um, you'll click the join meeting button just like you would on the internet or if you were using your laptop or your desktop computer, you'd hit join meeting and you would enter the meeting ID and um, you can click okay to allow for your camera on your phone or your iPad to be used. And then it will also ask for permission to use your microphone. So you'll wanna say yes to both of those. And um, if you want to allow notifications on your phone, um, you can do that, um, or on your iPad, you can do that. That's your choice, but it will also ask you um, for any kind of note if you'd like notifications. And then it'll say um, click call using internet audio to use your Wi Fi um, in order to call in from a cell phone or from your landline. <clears throat> but just make sure that when you enter a meeting, you might wanna put yourself on mute right away. Um, if you are going into a class such as, let's say meditation or yoga, um, you might wanna just mute yourself as soon as you come into the class, which I can show you again how you do that. Um, on a laptop, it's again, this lower left corner as soon as you enter one of those classes, just to help with um, reducing any kind of back, background noise. That uh, would definitely be helpful. So, um, what we'll do is um, we'll bring Sarah Thompson on next 
so that we can show you a few more things and um, hopefully give a little bit more clarification on how to use the phone and how to use an iPad with Zoom. Alrighty, so now we are at uh, part two of our Zoom training and uh, with us today we have um, Sarah Thompson on the video. Sarah, feel free to introduce yourself. Sure, so I am Sarah Thompson. I am the Northern Kentucky and Eastgate Program Manager, Cancer Support Community, and I'm happy to be here today to help you guys learn how to do Zoom. Awesome, and thank you, Sarah. I appreciate your time. So what we're gonna do today, I know I've um, gone over a few things already in regards to now you've got your Zoom account. Let's say you've got your Zoom account set up, um, and this is what it would look like if you started um, a Zoom class of ours, though uh, it's kind of a different example in that there's only two of us in this class, but this is kind of giving you an idea of what to expect. Um, and right now, uh, we are in what's called gallery view, um, which means that you can see everybody on the screen when you choose gallery view. Now, this is only if you're on your desktop or your laptop, and we'll go over um, what it might look like on your iPhone, in addition to what you can expect um, if it's on a tablet or an iPad. So, but if you're on a desktop computer, this is kind of what you're gonna get. Otherwise, if you look up in the upper right corner, this is where you can change your view. So for example, if I hit speaker view, there's Sarah. If I go back to gallery view, um, there's the both of us again. And so um, that's one thing to keep in mind. And just remember, um, lower left corner, you can mute your And uh, you can also, if you are in a class and you don't want anybody to see you, um, you can always stop your video, um, which is as simple as this. So now, you know, I'm still talking, but now you can't see me. And Jen, when you do that, do you, are you able to still see the class and what's going yes. on with the class? Yes. So I can still see everything. I can still hear everything. Even if I just mute myself. You can, you can still hear me? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I can still hear Sarah. Um, so that's a really great um, thing to keep in mind. If you're not comfortable, um, if you've got background noise, stuff going on, um, you know, and it's getting loud or other people are talking in another room, um, that's how you can put yourself on mute and you can stop your video for any class that you would like. And again, the only things, just as a reminder, that are pertinent and, and good for you to know about are um, the chat button, which is at the bottom of the screen, um, where if you really needed to say something, or let's say um, you have a question, um, you can, if you don't feel like talking, or you're in a space where, let's say it's a yoga class or something to that effect, but you need to ask a question, the chat box is a great way to get a hold of the instructor. Uh, sure, what can I help you with? There we go. Um, without disrupting the class, and especially if it's like an education program or cooking for wellness, um, you can use the chat box to do any of those things. Alrighty, so um, that's really the only thing that you really need to know about with regard to using Zoom on your desktop or your laptop. Am I missing anything, Sarah? No, I think that is pretty much it. I think we covered it. Oh, those are the those are the important things. Yeah, because a lot of this down here is for um, the purpose of the host, and so you're not going to need to utilize a lot of this stuff. You can kind of just ignore everything down there if you're not comfortable with it. You don't need to use it anyway, so that's good. Well, in that case, Sarah, how if I want to use Zoom on my now this is an iPhone. Um, it's as far as I'm, as far as I know, Sarah, you can tell me if I'm wrong, it's going to be very similar if you have like a Samsung or a different device. Is that correct? Yes, as long um, as you have a cell phone, a smartphone. Okay. A smartphone. So I have my smartphone. Um, what do I do first? I would like to get on to some of the classes, but the only thing I have is the smartphone. I don't have a computer or anything else. What do I do? 
So you're going to want to go to the App Store, um, which it, with Apple, it is, looks like a little compass. Found and it. When you click on that, you are going to want to hit the search button okay. down in the lower right hand corner. Got looks it. like a little magnifying glass. When you do that, it should pop up and say search at the top where it says games, apps, stories, and more. You click there and then you, all you need to do is type in Zoom, Z-O-O-M. All right. Zoom, is this it? Uh, that's it. That is it. So uh, it says Zoom Cloud Meetings. So over on the right hand side, it's going to say the word get. If you click on that, it should start downloading for you. Now, depending on how you have your phone set up, you may have to enter your uh, Apple ID and password. Is this a free and app? It is a free app. Yes, 100% free. free. Um, if it asks you to pay for anything, then you have the wrong app. Um, there are some cases where they could ask you to pay. So if, if it's asking you that, just hit back and get out of that um, and find the one that says get because that's the one that's going to be free. All right, so now I'm at this screen. So if I want to join this meeting that you, are, you and I are in right now, what do I do next? All you have to do is click sign in if you already have your Zoom account established. Okay. So then you would enter in your password and uh, your username. However, if you did not set that up on your laptop, you can always just click join a meeting on there, Jen. Oh. Okay. And you are, will be able to access the meeting that we are in right now. Okay, so all you need to do is find the meeting ID for the meeting and this information will come to you in an email or on our social media pages. You can also find it on our website. So the meeting ID for this specific meeting that Jen and I are doing right now is 922-6184. Four one seven four, and then after you type that in, Jen, all you should have to do is hit join. And yep, okay. hopefully it works. So here What's um, that is mean? that is meaning it's gonna ask you if it's okay for the camera on your phone to show your face during meetings. And this is really important in support groups to have your face shown um, if you have the ability to. So go ahead and click OK. Okay. And then oh. the next one pops up and it'll ask you if you want to utilize the microphone. And you're going to hit OK with that one as well so we can hear you. Ta-da! You're yeah. in the meeting. Can you hear me on my phone? I can. It's a little echoey, but that's only because I'm on here twice. So don't worry. Uh, you are not going to experience <laughs> any echoing unless you have Zoom open on two accounts, in which case... Just close one of them by and sometimes leaving. sometimes you do get a little echoing. All you would have to do would be to log out of the meeting, leave the meeting, and come back in with that same meeting ID. And it, it usually corrects itself if there's any kind of issues. Okay, cool. So then I just, I left that meeting um, on the phone. So then that's easy enough on my phone. Cool. And like I said, it's my understanding that if you have an Android device, you can go to um, the App Store on that device and download the Zoom app and get in very much the same way. Okay, great. Well, is there anything else about the iPhone? I got off there. Um, but what we wanted to do um, with the iPhone is to also make sure to show you some of the ins and outs of the iPhone. Um, every device is a little different with Zoom. And so as a result, um, 
you're going to have to play around with the phone a little differently than you would. So um, we'll show you how to do that. I can do you do that? All righty. So um, I'm now on my iPhone. And um, what we want to do is on here. Hi, there we are. Um, want to show you a little bit on how to do some things on your iPhone. So here we are on the iPhone. Now I can only see myself. So how would I, Sarah, um, be able to see everybody in the room? With the iPhone, it's really hard to see everybody in the room. So what you would have to okay. do would be to swipe towards the that side. What is that? To the left. There you go. You can awesome. see up to four people at a time. Right. Um, um, so if your group has more than four people, you can just simply swipe to the left again and you'll get the next set of four people. However, it's not going to work for us because there's okay. only three of us right now. Then what's all this? And that is actually something you are not going to need to use. Um, don't worry about that feature at all. So just really what you're going to do is focus on this screen here. So if now, you hit this phone, if I want to, all right, so now we're, now we're, if I want to like mute myself or hide my video on my phone, where do I do that at? If you hit that little black square right there, it should oh. pop up down at the bottom. Huh. Um, and all you would have to do, sorry, I have really difficult time seeing it. There it is. Um, video, where it says audio. join audio. Um, Jen is not connected to the audio just because if Jen would connect to that, it would have the echo. Um, so if you are on your phone and you have your audio connected, which you should have it connected, you're just going to hit right there in the bottom left hand corner and it'll say mute. Um, so that can mute you if you have um, some background noise. Um, also, if you need to go get a drink of water, but you still want to listen to the, the group in the meeting that's going on, um, please stop your video because otherwise if you're walking around with the iPhone, it can get a little hairy for everybody else that's still watching. Some people can actually get a little sick, uh, motion sickness from it. So those are the two things you're going to need to know about the bottom of the iPhone. Other than that, it's pretty simple. That is super simple. Thank you very much. Um, now, what if I had um, my eye? Now, I have an iPad, or let's say it's a tablet. Is it pretty much similar with an iPad or with a, with a tablet? Definitely. So all you need to do would be to go to the App Store on your tablet okay. and search for Zoom again. Okay. Got it. And remember, it is free, so if you click the Get button over on the right-hand side, it should start okay. downloading for you. If you have Download blazing fast inter internet speed, it'll hop right up. Otherwise, it might take a second. Does that look the same yeah. as the phone? That looks the same as the phone. So you have two choices here if you have a Zoom account. You can sign in or you can simply use the meeting ID from the website or the emails that you get in order to enter, just hit join that meeting. So what is the meeting ID again? Sure, it is 922-6184-4174. And each one of the meetings will have its own unique meeting ID number. Got it. So make sure you so reference that. Don't use this meeting ID, everybody <laughs> watching, for anything else because it's not going to work. No, nope, you won't even get then to I see Then I just us. hit the join button. Just hit join. Okay. And then it should ask you similar questions about um, utilizing your camera and utilizing oh, yeah. your microphone. So make sure you hit okay to okay. both of those. Oh, all right. Hold on just a second. I'll get myself a little oriented here. Ta-da! Wow, that's cool. Welcome <laughs> on two videos, everybody. It's Bye. super easy, super easy. So, if I can do this. I'm going to show everybody. 
this is just what I'm seeing now. Look at all the screens. <laughs> oh, look, there's me. And so what do I do if I want a gallery view on here? Where simply, is that? Simply swipe to the left again. Oh, I can't do that on the iPad. I think on the iPad, oh. it's right here. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Yes, you're correct. There, there we you go. go. So now we've got the gallery view on the iPad and then um, the upper the upper left corner, if you need to leave, you can leave. And then on the right, you should be able to use the mute function and the stop yeah, video it's, function. But you're correct. There's all the functions up at the right that we're showing you that you can see. You can stop your video. You can hit, like um, Sarah said, you can um, stop your audio. Um, and that's pretty much pretty simple. It is, and uh, Jen, I do want to mention, if you are uh, typing in that meeting ID, it's really helpful for the instructors if you, when you're typing in the meeting ID, underneath it is your name. If you uh, put your first, first and last name so that the okay. instructor knows and can take attendance properly uh, okay. for the meetings. Now, then to reiterate, if I am concerned at all about um, being seen or not wanting to be seen on any of the devices. If you just hit stop video, um, mm -hmm. they'll still be able to see your name. Um, they'll still be able to talk if you need to talk and you'll be able to see everybody, but it just will stop your own video. Yes, uh -huh. so you aren't seen. So some people feel a little uncomfortable in the exercise classes having their video on and that's totally fine. If you hit that stop video button, the instructor can still see that you're present. Um, and you can still see the instructor. However, you are not being shown on the video. Cool. All righty. Well, um, did we miss anything? I don't think so. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. I hope that this instruction video was helpful. If you have any more questions, please, um, firstly, don't hesitate to call. Um, we still are available um, at our phone number at 513-791-4060 um, to get a hold of either Sarah or myself. Um, and hopefully we will be able to help you sort out any kind of individual problems that you might have with Zoom. Uh, we're not super tech savvy, but we will certainly do our best to help you um, if you want to get more involved. So uh, we hope you're doing well, and this ends our training. Oh, oh, hold on one second, Jen. I did remember. There is a way if you are having a lot of trouble with Zoom or you don't have a camera that you can actually call into the meeting still to participate and listen. Oh, yes. um, okay. So there is a way to do that if you okay. have any trouble uh, with the phone. It, when you sign up, they usually can give you some numbers to call. So if you pre register for a meeting, you will have okay. the numbers to call. If not, um, and you do not have the ability to get on via cameras and Zoom, if you call the office, one of us will be able to give you a number that you can call in, and then you just have to enter the meeting ID okay. when you call. Perfect. Yeah, that helps a lot. Um, just like you said, in the event that, you know, I don't even have, you know, a desktop computer to use, and I just have a regular cell phone, then I can at least, like you said, if it's something I could just call in and gain some information or at least connect a little bit, then I can do that. That's at least something. Yes, and it's better than nothing. We don't want anybody to feel left out during this time. Absolutely. All right, well, anything else? I think that's it. All right, well, once again, if anyone has any other questions, please get a hold of us and reach out. And we hope that you have a wonderful day, that you are safe, and that we can see you as soon as it is safe and possible, and uh, take care.